Hello and welcome to the next episode in the lecture series Introduction to Cryptography. My name is Dominik Schröder and in this video we are going to take a look at formal security proofs. Stay tuned. So to motivate the usage of reduction proofs, let's take a look at the very simple example here. So this is Alice and this is Bob, hello. Alice and Bob wish to communicate securely. Now the problem is that this communication channel here, right, is essentially a public channel, which means that the adversary can simply intercept whatever is going on here, right? So you would essentially be standing here and listen to everything that is going on over this channel. So this is unfortunate and Alice and Bob would like to make sure that the guy cannot listen anymore. So how this is done in practice, in fact, is by the, by the usage of cryptographic protocols, for example, like TLS. Of course, we're not going to take, take a deeper look on TLS. This is way too involved and way too complex. But we will explain on a high level the components that are used and why they why and why they need it, and then we explain the rough idea of reductions. Well, let's assume that both of them would like to communicate securely. One way to secure this channel is by the usage of some encryption. Okay, so this piece here, you might see it directly, is the symmetric encryption scheme that is used here to secure the channel. Great, so now Alice and Bob can actually communicate with each other and since uh, the adversary cannot enter this secure channel anymore, it seems to be secure. Well, so far so good, but of course there's the question, how do they actually exchange the key? Well, we have a piece for that. This is our awesome key exchange protocol. We're plugging this to our channel and now we have a method, methodology to exchange key and to establish this channel. Well, the adversary might be able to change something within the communication, so we need some form of integrity. Great. So this is our integrity protection algorithm, something like a Mac, that we will also see in this lecture. And now we have a few components that secure our channel, and now the adversary cannot attack the communication channel at all. Awesome. Now that we have this nice Lego pieces here, how does it actually help to understand security proofs? Well, what we did on an intuitive level was we used cryptographic components such as a private key encryption scheme, uh, a key exchange protocol and some message authentication code in order to secure this channel here. Right, so when we designed this, we actually had in mind that each of these pieces here fulfills a certain task. And our hope is that the combination of these pieces here gives us exactly what we want. And the reduction does, not, does nothing else but exactly showing this. So it means that we are looking at this protocol here and there are certain attack vectors how we can actually attack the secure, secure channel. One attack vector would actually be that the adversary manages to learn the key during this execution. And then the reduction would essentially say, okay, if you manage to break the part of the protocol that established the key here, then I've actually built an algorithm that can break this part of the key agreement protocol. In other words, I take the program here, if, which breaks this part of the keys of the, of the secure communication protocol, and I build a different algorithm out of it that breaks the key exchange protocol. But because we assume that this key exchange protocol is secure, of course, such an adversary cannot exist. Okay, so this piece is secure. What about the next pieces? Well, we said that this part here is for integrity protection. So if the adversary manages to break the integrity of our secure channel like that, then we again turn this into a different algorithm that now breaks the underlying component. And finally, the same argument holds for our encryption scheme if the adversary manages to learn anything 
anything about the information that Atlas and Bob exchanged, then I will use this adversary in order to break the encryption scheme. And again, because we assume that the encryption scheme is secure, such a transformation does not exist. So this was a nice and small introduction with Lego pieces. We will now take a more formal look into this basic interior. To formally show the security of any cryptographic scheme, we need to do three steps. The first step is the intuitive description of what we actually would like to achieve. And this is how we work in research. So mainly we will essentially create these figures and describe what is the functionality that we would like to achieve. Similar like in the case of this nice Lego figures, right? Alice and Bob would like to exchange messages securely. And once we have this intuition, we usually turn this intuition into a formal description, similar like in the case of programming languages. We define the interfaces and the interfaces nicely tell us how can we interact with this cryptographic object. Once this is done, we understand what the object actually is and how we can work with it. And then in the next step, we need to define the security properties, which means what does it mean for the cryptographic scheme to be secure? Finally, in the third step, we essentially need to show that this definition can be fulfilled and is secure, which means we will give a concrete cryptographic construction. And usually this construction will be based on very simple building blocks. Right in our running example with these Lego pieces, the building blocks we used were private key encryption, key exchange, and message authentication codes. Also, we haven't introduced these objects formally. It's not really important at this point. What is important is that we constructed something new out of these individual building blocks. And on the security reduction, we will actually show that the construction is secure, meaning if you can break the security model with respect to the definition that we just gave, then we will show how you can turn this algorithm into one that breaks the underlying assumptions. So let's take the next step and formalize this intuition a little bit more. Well, at the first place, right, there is the cryptographic scheme that we will define. And afterwards, there will be usually a theorem that states, if a certain assumption holds, then the cryptographic scheme is secure with respect to a certain definition. Let's, let's think about the example again, right? The theorem would essentially say, if the encryption scheme is secure and the message authentication code is secure and the key exchange is secure, then our new protocol is secure as well. Once we have this theorem, then essentially we will create a contradiction. And this contradiction essentially will say, if you manage to break my scheme, my new protocol, then I will break these building blocks which we assumed are secure. Because these building blocks are actually secure, you cannot find a reduction or you cannot find an algorithm that breaks it. And therefore, the overall scheme must be secure as well. So let's take a closer look how this actually works. As you can see here, you will see that's the formal theorem abstract notion of a theorem, but it's a theorem that essentially says, if the problem is difficult, then the construction is secure. And now if we create the contradiction, then essentially we will say the scheme is insecure. And therefore we are giving this adversary that you can see here. So where is this adversary coming from? Well, we are receiving it for free. Once we are assuming that the protocol or the cryptographic primitive is insecure, then by definition, we are guaranteed that we have an efficient algorithm that breaks the security as we defined it. So we don't need to understand how this algorithm actually works, right? It's given to us in a black box, like a box where you can interact with. And the next step, we will create a reduction. And the reduction is nothing else but a translation from our hard problems to this adversary. So what we will do is essentially, we will create something like a translator. You might, might think of it as a translator that takes this input at instance of the hard problem and essentially simulates the entire environment for the adversary. For example, 
If you think back to our Lego example, right, one of the building blocks was an encryption scheme. I know that we haven't defined the encryption scheme formally, but as you know, right, one instance of this encryption scheme will be given to us, and then we will have to use the adversary that we have here in order to break this encryption scheme. And in general, the way we do it is that we make sure that these interfaces match, and in the end, we will use whatever the adversary gives us in order to break the underlying hard assumption. At this point, this might be very abstract, and we will see a very concrete example that should help you to follow each step. Thank you.